everyone, it's Jeff from J. Allen Pipes. Welcome back for the third episode of the video blog. In this episode, we will be discussing sandblasting. It was another request that was sent in. So again, if you have uh, requests, uh, items you'd like to uh, see illustrated or discussed here in the video blog, please do send them to my email, jeff at jallenpipes.com, or uh, send them to me through the blog or uh, through the website. Uh, today's episode we will be, as I said, discussing sandblasting. And it seems like it's a, a great topic of interest. There's a, there's a, a large uh, interest, uh, at least I've experienced it in my work, in sandblasting. Uh, people are very interested in the textures that sandblasting provide, whether people are into straight grain or cross grain. Some people like very deep and craggy and well-defined sandblasts. Other people like very light, uh, as I call them, uh, Danish style uh, sandblasts, similar to what you find on uh, uh, Stanwells. And uh, in the American school, we seem to be more interested in, in the uh, deep and craggy style, I think, a la uh, Jim Cook. Um, so today is an example, or as two examples, I have two billiard based shapes. The first is obviously a taper stem billiard, and the second is a lovet. And uh, these are both going to be ring grain shapes. It's difficult to see because of the resolution in the film. But this pipe, as well as its uh, mate, has straight grain running up the sides of the bowl. So anytime you have straight grain running in the uh, opposite direction or perpendicular to the straight grain is ring graining running around the bowl. And that ring graining will run down the shank if we are lucky. You'll also notice with this pipe that the stem is covered in a white material. Really what that is is just electrical tape. Uh, we use electrical tape uh, because the sandblasting media bounces off of that. And uh, the way that I go about doing these uh, uh, sandblasts is making sure that I, I actually finish the entire stem and I'm finishing all of the areas underneath the tape um, before. And that makes sure that I have a flush fit afterwards. I don't have to worry about buffing or sanding or anything underneath that tape so that I keep sharp uh, edges, which is something that I like to see in my work. Um, you can see on this pipe that I have a dark understain. So that is also under the tape. When I'm done sandblasting, you will not see that dark area anymore, but when I peel the tape off, that will be there, and I'll put the top uh, coat of stain over that, and it will have a, a lovely contrasted finish to show off some of the grain. Same with this one. This has a burgundy color to it. And also taped off, not only the stem, but also the, the, the very small ring of um, smooth briar that you uh, typically see, at least on American, uh, and on most sandblasted pipes for that matter. Uh, now without further ado, to the sandblast. Before we get to the sandblasting proper, I wanted to show to you the equipment that is used in sandblasting. It's fairly simple. Uh, although the, the startup costs are kind of expensive. I have a small sandblasting cabinet, as you can see here, made by Cyclone. And through this window on the top, I can see through to the media that's collecting on the bottom, the gun on the left, and then the two pipes that are to be sandblasted. I also have, uh, there's a light on the inside, and I use another light here so I can see a full, um, uh, as clearly as possible, the pipes that I'm sandblasting. Also behind the sandblaster, I've got a vacuum, which is the large black column uh, just to the left of the blue sandblasting container. And then behind that, my compressor. And those are the basics, basic tools necessary for sandblasting. see the billiard after it has just had its preliminary blast and I take an initial blast just to show the ring graining it's gonna be difficult to see but it's just barely pronounced and that allows me to follow it more precisely at a later stage
Here now we have the Lovett, and the Lovett has had its uh, second and third stages of blasting done. You can see uh, how much more defined the growth rings are now. You run all the way around the bowl, up the shank. It's going to be difficult to see. It's hard to get the lighting proper or correct for uh, this kind of uh, uh, video shoot. And also you'll notice that I did not blast the rim because I'm going to be uh, finishing that up as smooth afterwards. So that takes uh, uh, some precision and some, uh, some great care to do that properly. Alright folks, here we are after several hours have passed since this video blog entry began. Um, I, the last two videos showed you the, first of all, the preliminary stage blast where I was revealing the uh, ring grain pattern so that I could then go in and do detail blasting which I showed to you in the second video of the billiard. Both pipes are now completely finished. The tape has been removed, uh, stain has been applied, or in the case of the billiard, which is now a, uh, a, a virgin um, because it had absolutely no flaws in it. Um, I uh, have uh, had to sand off the black stain at great pains that you'll remember I put on at the beginning of this episode and uh, it turned into a gorgeous little blast. You can see the grain is very, very uh, nicely detailed. The shape has been preserved very well. It's got a brindle stem which I think is a beautiful, beautiful complement to the uh, uh, natural color of the briar, a smooth rim, a gorgeous pipe. And this, the other pipe, the Lovett, has been given a contrast stain. Uh, contrast staining, as many of you know, was developed by Jody Davis of J. Davis Pipes, who, as a good friend of mine, allowed me to, uh, uh, to use his stain. I've developed my own colors. This is my Burgundy Blast color. And the Burgundy Blast goes very well with this uh, pipe's uh, uh, stem, which is also brindle. It's got a smooth rim. The contrast standing really shows off the straight and flame graining running through the pipe. It's really, really a beautiful pipe. And that's about it. I know I've missed many things, uh, overlooked many things, taken many things for granted, but uh, that's what the comment section of this blog is for. Please do uh, post any questions, any further questions or clarifications that you would like uh, in the comment section of the uh, blog, and I will uh, answer them there in text, or if there are enough of them, we'll do it in a video blog entry in the future. Thanks again for tuning in to the J. Allen Pipes video blog, and tune in next time for episode four. Mm -hmm.